Welcome. In this video, we'll look at the end behavior of rational functions. A rational function is a function defined by a quotient, meaning division, of two polynomials. So imagine that p and q are two polynomials, and I define a function where I take p of x divided by q of x. This function is what we call a rational function. Now the summary of what we're learning is that the end behavior of a rational function will behave like the power function formed by the quotient of the leading terms. And what that means is we look at the leading term, the highest power of the numerator, p of x, and I look at the highest power of the denominator, q of x. I create the ratio of those and simplify. That'll be a power function. And the end behavior will behave like that. So here are two examples of rational functions. Um, I've got a function on the left, f of x. Notice it's a quadratic power 2. Here's the leading term, x squared, 4x squared. And in the denominator is a linear function. That's a degree 1 polynomial. Leading term is 3x. And if I create the ratio of the leading terms, so I take 4x squared over 3x, that simplifies to 4 thirds times x. And this symbol, this, this symbol here, the squiggle, means uh, asymptotic similarity. So my function f of x behaves like, and the end behavior, 4 thirds x. And you can see in the graph, I've got the graph of my original f of x. It's this uh, rational function. Notice it has a vertical asymptote somewhere. And um, here's the line 4 thirds x. And you can see that the end behavior, as x goes to positive infinity, I behave like 4 thirds x. And as x goes to negative infinity, my function behaves like 4 thirds x. Now there's a little bit of an offset here. There's something called a slant asymptote. We're not going to learn about that. Um, but a slant asymptote would be the line that it actually gets close to. All I care about for this video is understanding end behavior. I've defined a second function, g of x, that has the same numerator, but this time it's a cubic in the denominator. The leading term is x cubed, so that when I calculate the ratio of the leading terms, 4x squared over x cubed, that simplifies to 4 over x. Here's the graph of g of x. It's this cool looking function with a, again, there's a vertical asymptote somewhere here. And then I've got a uh, right hand side. And the dashed curve, that's my asymptotic curve, 4 over x. Okay. Notice they have different inside behavior. The middle's different. But as x goes to infinity, um, both of these functions behave the same. So they're both going to 0 as x goes to plus or minus infinity. Now, to demonstrate the calculation of limits of rational functions, um, in other words, how we justify this relationship that we've just described, we're going to take three steps. Uh, the first step is that we factor out the dominant power from both the top and the bottom of the quotient. Then we'll simplify that result, and from the simplified version we can calculate limits. We'll demonstrate this with both of the examples that we looked at previously. We know what the behavior should look like, and, and what we want to do is uh, be able to calculate the limits um, more carefully. All right, for our first function, we're looking at f of x equals 4x squared minus 2x plus 5 over 3x minus 1. The first step of our process is to factor out the dominant power from top and bottom of the quotient. So our dominant terms, in the numerator we have 4x squared, and in the denominator we have 3x. All I need to factor out is the power of x. So let's factor x squared out of the top. And when I do that, that means I take every term and I'll divide it by x squared. So I have 4x squared over x squared minus 2x over x squared and 5 over x squared. In the denominator, I factor out the leading power of x, which is x, and so I get 3x over x minus 1 over x, and okay, 
So that's the uh, factored out version. And now the second step is to simplify the result. So we're going to simplify x squared over x. We'll simplify that. And then each of these powers inside the sums, we'll simplify those as well. All right. So x squared over x, one of those x's cancel, leaving x. Um, and then each of these terms, 4x squared over x squared gives me 4, and then I get minus 2 over x, 5 over x squared. And in the denominator, I'll get 3 minus 1 over x. Now, why did I do this? Well, when I let the limit x goes to infinity, this leading term, that's my leading behavior. And notice that all of these terms, I'll get a constant. And every time I divide by x to a power, those all go to 0. So I can calculate my limits. If I look at the limit of my function, limit of f of x, and I let x go to infinity, then I'm doing a limit as x goes to infinity of this formula that we've just calculated. And we can calculate those limits. x goes to infinity, and then I get 4 minus 0 plus 0. And in the denominator, I get 3 minus 0. And so in the end, I get infinity times 4 thirds. Well, that's infinity. And if I take a limit as x goes to minus infinity of my function, it will be the same formula. And so x goes to minus infinity. The numerator goes to 4 minus 0 plus 0. And the denominator goes to 3 minus 0. And so I get minus infinity times 4 thirds. That's, that's minus infinity. And so the behavior, the end behavior, behaves like the line x, or 4 thirds x. On the right, it goes to infinity. On the left, it goes to minus infinity. For our second example, we'll look at the function g of x. We want to understand its limits at infinity. So we do the same process. We start by factoring out our leading powers, or our dominant powers, from both the top and the bottom. So then we'll simplify. Let's start by writing our function and then factor its powers. So here's our function g of x. And if I factor out x squared from the top, I get x squared. The first term inside will be 4x squared over x squared, which simplifies to 4, minus 2x over x squared. That gives me negative 2 over x. And then 5 over x squared gives me 5 over x squared. Now let's factor out the bottom. In the denominator, if I factor out an x cubed, x cubed over x cubed gives me 1. x over x cubed, when x cancels, I'm left with 1 over x squared, and then minus 5 over x cubed. When I do my limits, as x goes to infinity, the constants will stay. These terms with denominators of x, those will go to 0. All I need to do is think about what simplifies x squared over x cubed. And that simplifies to 1 over x. So now when I take my limits, as x goes to infinity, 1 over x will be 0 in the limit. And this ratio that's left, that will have a limit of 4. Let's write down our limit. The limit of my function g of x, as x goes to infinity, will be equal to the limit, as x goes to infinity, of my simplified formula, or my rewritten formula. And that limit, 1 over x, that has a limit of 0. The quotient has a limit of 4 over 1. And my final limit is 0. Notice that this behavior behaves like 4 over x. That's the asymptotic shape. All right. Um, this limit is the same for both plus or minus infinity because the end behavior didn't change. Both sides have the same horizontal asymptote. All right, thanks for watching. Good luck.